I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about do this when you feel the space. Well, you're gonna find that no matter who you're dating or in a relationship with, there are gonna be times where that person needs space from you. And it's in these times where we're going to feel activated by our anxiety and our attachment issues. This is something that I've been trying to teach you guys since I started the channel, because what you're gonna learn is that attachment issues and our attachment styles and attraction go hand in hand. So, the more that you enlighten yourself on your attachment issues, the more you're gonna be able to understand attraction and how to behave attractively. So I've got a really good email today from somebody that I did a coaching with recently, but I wanna to talk to you a little bit about this first because I want you to understand no matter who you date, there are gonna be times where they pull away, where they're less interested, they're maybe unsure about things, maybe they're going through their own issues, whatever is going on, they want space from you. And this is normal. And that's why I've said for years that feelings change like the clouds that move across the sky. Now, when it's happening to you, it feels very personal, if you think about it. When you think about the person you're interested in right now, and you think about their attraction level being down, it kind of is like, oh, I can't believe their attraction is low. Why would they do this to me? How could they do this to me? What's the point of being in a relationship? You can get really triggered by some of these things. But if you think about it, your attraction for them has probably gone up and down, right? Especially if you dated for an extended amount of time. There have probably been points where they've said or done things that you're less interested or maybe there was somebody else at work that you're also interested in. It's not necessarily a personal thing. And so try not to take those things personally and definitely don't get triggered. And the more that you work on your own attachment issues, the more likely you're going to attract people that you never thought you could attract. Because you always have to realize that there's always gonna be competition. Even if you're married to somebody, there's gonna be people that are interested in your partner or your spouse. And that's why you always want to be their best option, okay? Because the more you show up as a secure, confident person that's there for them and making life great, the less likely they're going to consider other options, right? And some people get really hurt and offended by that, that somebody would consider dating other people. But if you only have one life, don't you want to make the most of it? And if you're in a relationship where your partner is not making an effort, they're neglectful, they're anxious and controlling, manipulative. Why should they stay, right? If they've told you 50 times, you got to work on this particular issue and you're not doing it, how long are they supposed to tolerate it? Until you say it's okay? No, it doesn't work like that. It's fair for both people, both parties involved, right? In other words, like if you weren't happy with somebody and if you ask them to make changes and they don't and they and you leave, you had every right to leave. Just like if your partner has asked you to work on your issues, whatever it might be, and you don't, eventually they're going to get tired and they're going to realize you're not taking them seriously. So you always want to consider being present in your relationship and showing up for your partner. And obviously that goes for them as well. But be patient and understanding that there are going to be times where they need space. They're going to be less interested. 
not wanting to see you as often, maybe not as committed to the relationship or where it's going. And understand that if you don't work on your attachment issues, your anxiety is going to come out and you're going to do things that wind up pushing them away. Because you feel the space and that biological drive that we have to stay close to our loved ones is going to start going off like an alarm system. Get close to them. Get close to them, right? And you're going to try and bridge that gap, that space between them. Fill that void. But oftentimes, it makes the other person feel smothered, trapped, and they get turned off. So, I did a call with a guy recently. Uh, we did a Skype call who's been watching the channel for not too long. And he started the creative healing course, but he got thrown off his motivation for a little bit. And we're going to get to that. But now he's back on track. So he had met this girl that he really liked and they were dating for about four months or so. And I think one of the problems from the get go was they were texting too much. In the beginning, we wind up texting that person all the time. It feels fun and exciting. But for whatever reason, they lose interest. And so you really want to make the focus on seeing them in person and allowing that time and excitement to build up to in-person dates. Makes a big difference. These little things make a huge difference in making the attraction last. So he said that he liked her a lot. She liked him a lot. But he admitted he came on too strong and that he felt triggered because uh, what was going on is he noticed that she started getting a little distant and it started to bother him. Okay, so obviously he was trying to repair things more and more. He started to double text. He would say things like, where are you? LOL. But it's really not a joke. It's really like he's panicking. Those subtle little things are what I'm talking about are the difference between the people that get the people that are amazing and losing those people to somebody else. Okay, so she started to lose interest. He starts trying to repair it more and more, you know, in that space. And she told him, let's just be friends. Now, he had found the channel by that point and he said, look, I can't be friends. You know, he walked away in a polite way and said, give me a call if you change your mind. So at that point, he left her alone, which is what we tell you often to do. He started working on the course and then we did our call. So. About a month goes by and she starts to realize that she is now feeling the space. Okay. See what's happening here. He was feeling the space. He was panicking. We did our call. We talked about everything, what was going on. He got a plan. We stuck, he stuck to it. And then she started to feel the space. She started to reach out to him, but this time he didn't over pursue. Uh, he wasn't double texting anymore. He wasn't panicking with like his little passive aggressive remarks. And they actually wound up hooking up several times. I think they spent a weekend together or something like that. And it was going well. So what do you think happened? What happens more often than I would wish to see? He stopped doing the work. Okay. He stopped doing the course. Because, and this is what happens, he started focusing on that connection again. He gets so excited. What happens is we get so excited about that connection again, we just assume that once it's going great again, it's going to stay going great again. But he really hadn't done enough work to really make long lasting changes. So before he knew it, he started going back to his old mistakes. He didn't realize it until it was too late and the texts were getting shorter. She was taking longer to reply again and her interest level started going down again. So it's important that you understand in order for the dynamic to shift, once you've done things to turn people off, you really got to get emotionally centered. And it's not easy to do that because our insecurities come out. And that's what so many of you guys fail to see is that you're not 
gonna feel your insecurities coming out again until you start liking somebody new a lot and feel that connection with them. Now, of course, this can go also if your ex comes back and you're in a situation where you're trying to reattract an ex, where they're coming back and you haven't done enough work and within three or four months, you're going back to your old patterns, they see right through it and they break up with you for good. So I hate to see that for you guys. So please always stay motivated. That's what the workbooks in the Creative Healing Course are for. And that's why there's so much content in there. They can keep you busy for months on end. And the course I'm sure could keep you busy for at least six months because it's so huge. Okay, so I got his email here. This is a follow up to our Skype coaching. This is what he said. He said, hi, Coach Craig. I just wanted to do a follow up with you on our Skype. First of all, I wanted to say it was very helpful and I really appreciate it. And for those of you who are wondering, the only way to get a Skype coaching with me is through my website, AskCraig.net. There are a lot of scammers out there. They're really slick. They'll do whatever they can. Like I said, the only way to get my help personally is signing up for a coaching on the website. Okay, that's how you know it's secure. So they go on to say, I felt a lot better after our call, and quite frankly, that's the best I felt about dating and understanding relationships. I followed your advice, and we even spent a few nights together. But when things got better with her, I kind of stopped doing the work and focused more on talking with her and texting with her all the time, like I had mentioned before. It wasn't long before she started taking longer to reply. When I tried to set another date with her, she said, we'll see. She's busy with work right now. But I do know she made plans with some of her friends and I'm feeling less like a priority. Well, you had done attractive behaviors before, you improved upon it, and then you kind of went back to your old ways a bit. Now, I don't think it was as bad as the first time around, but yeah, I mean, maybe she is prioritizing her friends because she's not feeling the attraction. That's what happens. It's the truth. People will prioritize what's most important to them. And if you're doing things that are turning them off, they're going to prioritize other people. To be honest, I feel kind of foolish because I didn't stick to our plan. When I did, things were turning around and I could feel her energy shift, even in the way she looked at me. But now, I can't help but think about her talking to other guys. I see her go on and off social media, posting things occasionally, just funny memes or reels, but it still has me obsessing about her. Sure, think about it. She's posting these memes online, and he's thinking, why didn't she send that to me? Why haven't I heard from her? Why didn't she text me back? but she can be online posting this meme or this story or whatever it is. Signing on Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp where you can see people signing on and off and it's making him crazy, okay? He's obsessing about the wrong thing. Oh, he's gonna say it right here too. I was doing so much better when I was obsessing on doing the course and now I feel like I've blown it. In our last text, she said she'd let me know when she has some time. But I think it's just an excuse and I turned her off. Do you think she's done with me or do you think I still have a chance? Well, I think she probably has lost some interest right now, if I'm being honest. I don't think she's completely done with you. I think she's probably mulling things over, but She's probably feeling like, I don't understand what's going on with this guy. I liked him a lot. Then I wasn't feeling it. Then I started liking him again. Now I'm not feeling it again. So when you're in a situation like this, you can't keep making a mistake. You can't keep doing things that are going to turn her off. Uh, because how many opportunities do you think you're going to get here? You got to stay focused on those workbooks or the creative healing course in your case. And really obsessing about the things that are triggering you and learning about your anxiety and your anxious attachment style. 
You're making yourself too easy. And particularly in the beginning, people like a challenge. People like to feel like they've gotten a prize. Like they've gotten this one person they never thought they could get with, that they thought was out of their league. You know what I mean? Like, if you think about fishermen, they get excited about the fish that gave them a big struggle to pull them in, not the one that was easy to catch. So when you're anxious, you're easy to catch. That's the truth. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see is you've got to work on these issues because they, all they, she had to do here was take a little space and you're basically like, please don't leave me. And acting desperate and needy and insecure and honestly a lot of times all a woman has to do to see if a guy is insecure is take her time in replying and she weeds the guys out with the issues right away it's think how easy that is for her all she has to do take her time and watch the guys panic stumble beg double text chase her and guess which guys she goes for guys that respect themselves, the ones that are secure and confident. And as you start to display more confident behaviors, and it will be intrinsic and it will be natural because you've really done the work, you're not faking it, her interest level will also go up naturally. And of course, this goes for men's interest level too going up when women stop doing the insecure behavior, okay? And then you won't have to wait as long for the people to be reaching out because they will be excited to talk with you and eager to talk to you because they're not having you blowing up their phone. You're not, you know, so easy. You're more of a challenge and your insecure behaviors aren't turning them off. But when you really do the work, you can really see the change in the shift in the dynamics and in the connection and in the feeling of that connection. It's authentic. But if you're desperate, and believe me, if you're anxious, you're going to come across as desperate, people are going to lose attraction for you. You always want to act confident in whatever happens. And that's why I'm always trying to help you guys improve your mental health and your insecurities and your attachment issues. Because you have to really do that work to get there. It doesn't magically happen. Okay, unfortunately, you, you are whatever age you're at right now. It took you that many years to get where you're at and you've got to work through those issues. Okay, so it's going to take time. But when you truly are secure, you're confident with whoever comes and goes in your life and you're not getting rattled and angry and hurt and manipulative just because their interest level drops. And when people naturally take space in a relationship, because they always will, you'll be confident. But the truth of the matter is, the more confident and secure you are, the less likely that they're gonna want space from you. Because you're not gonna do things that are gonna make them want space. They'll naturally want space, but it won't be based on your behaviors. And that is a huge shift to a relationship. And that is what we're trying to teach you in the workbooks and in the creative healing course. So that's why I tell you guys, do them 30 minutes a day. He was doing well. He got excited about the relationship again, stopped doing the work and went back to his old ways. And that happens a lot. So please learn from other people's mistakes. Learn from my mistakes and all the mistakes that I've taught you about my own personal life over the years. That's why I tell you guys, so you see that I get it. I learned the hard way. And all the information that I've put together over the years, I've learned through experience, my education, my hard work, training with Margaret and all the other supervisors and clinicians I've had work with me over the years to get to the understanding where we're at, okay? So hopefully this helps you understand things a little bit better. Of course, if you want to get my help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. You can get my creative healing course and my workbooks there as well. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.